they yeah. block our quote signal. They just they just use words. They just <laughs> they say just words. Any old word. <laughs> Can I say I'm jealous? Yeah, I'm jealous. I would love to be as confident about the things I say as these fucking assholes are. I am constantly, well, I hope that came out right and the people like, blah, 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 blah. it would be so nice to just be like, hot pockets, now them's a neurotoxin, all right? What you're going to need to do <laughs> is get four tomatoes and a full moon. Right this down. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema, because otherwise my business card would make no sense at all. I'm your host, No Illusions. He's going to be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. Let's fucking do this thing. <laughs> Let us cure ourselves permanently. And of course, also joining us this week is the host of Talk Nerdy and our favorite guest masochist, Dr. Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> you need positive emotion. That's the whole fucking problem. You, <laughs> you thought a year away from this podcast would make you better, but it actually made lowered your defenses against this podcast. <laughs> so tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? Well, usually I start that with it's the story of there's no story in no, this movie. not this time. What was this? Okay, it's called E-Motion 2.0. E-Motion mm -hmm. 2.0. Lowercase E, like fucking E.E. E. Cummings or something. Yes. Shit. Yep. yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a promotional video for their scammy cult. Yeah, but which scammy? They're very unspecific about which scammy. <laughs> it's like yeah. a bunch of scammy cults all threw in on a cameraman, right? Yes. Yeah, but but if you Google it, you can figure out pretty quickly that it's the e. -motion. There's one unified yeah, there's, scammy cult. Okay, yeah, that's there's good one to place know. to get send all your money. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well. If you love the nonsense of TikTok Live at 4 a.m., but you wish it was themed like a Texas roadhouse, <laughs> you will love this movie. My friends, look, we have watched a lot of bullshit documentaries. A lot. And we've seen Flower Power and Chrysanthemum gently talk about crystals and curing your own cancer more times than I care to count. But the fucking talking heads they found at the Rancheroo for this <laughs> film make the entire experience worth while I loved every second of it. Oh, it was it was like every other woo documentary, but with rodeo clowns. It was amazing. <laughs> yes. So, and I should say, trigger warning for this movie. This is another one of those, if you're sick, it's your fault movies, right? That no doubt grew out of insanely privileged people saying, have you ever noticed that whenever you meet somebody with cancer, they're a total downer? I bet that's what gave them the cancer, <laughs> right? Yep. It's another one of those. Yep. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Best, worst, gray five o'clock shadow with a shoe polish mustache painted on <laughs> Yeah, top. offensive Steve Harvey costume worn by a white man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's insane. My favorite. I think about that man <laughs> twice a day. Yo, know, this entire episode could be about his mustache, about that guy's oh. fucking mustache. It's the best, worst. Sometimes people ask us like, hey, would you ever want to interview David A. R. White or, or down to James Parton? And I'm always like, no, no, I don't want to. I want to interview this guy and I don't want to talk about medicine or health <laughs> or what. I want to be like, so what facial hair did you see that you were like, you know what I should do? <laughs> <laughs> do you think Yosemite Sam is angry that you're taking so much of his look directly? Yeah. Uh, so I was going to go with best worst Dale Carnegie recommended gesticulations. So mm -hmm. I, I think like 11 out of 13 of the talking heads here are motivational speaker assholes who go and sell you Amway, you know, at the fucking at the community room at the Ramada or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they've all got these ridiculously 
I don't I don't know if you can say verbose when you're talking about gesticulations, <laughs> but every word it's it's like they're trying to make up sign language on the fly. Every almost every one of them. Yeah. You know how public speaking shouldn't be a college class and it's cruel to do to shy people? This is the movie that proves that. Is it's a bunch <laughs> of people being like, arms wide means welcome. That's this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I know I've used this one before, but I, I do think that this one has knocked its former champion out of the ranking. I'm going to go with Best Best Carrot Trap okay. because this movie starts almost sane. Yeah. Because it talks about emotions and psychological trauma and the difference between illness and health and whole body wellness. Things that our friend, medical doctor Cara Santa Maria, <laughs> is deeply oh interested gosh. in and has spent a lot of time studying. <laughs> She's a dead person dentist, duh. And I knew... <laughs> that that conversation was eventually going to lead to lemon juice cures depression. So I get to watch Kara's notes back away from this movie like it began to slowly shit itself at a nine-year-old's birthday party. That's the experience I got. I would say the problem with this, Eli, is that it doesn't slowly shit. It shits itself no. when it shows up to the nine-year-old's birthday party. It's so bad. And then yes. it just hangs out at the entire party and waits for us to say something. Yes, yes just, just stinking in the corner. So I'm just going to... Fully disclaimer at the very top of this episode for anybody listening for legal purposes. I am, a, I am a clinical psychologist. I have a Doctor. PhD in clinical psychology. Anything Eli says after this, just don't listen. There you go. Dentist doctor. That's I've been saying that to the listeners for years. I mean, Carrie, you can say that, but only one of us owns every possible iteration of Dr. com. So who do you want the people to listen to? You so me. Why am I friends with this man? I believe my business partner, Squarespace, has sided with me on this one. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of maladies to cure on the other side of the break. So we're going to keep it brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the unspeakable privilege that is... Emotion 2.0. And furthermore... My eyes! Hey, guys, what's going on? Well, Eli asked me about my underwear, so I sprayed him with bear mace. Gotcha. Sorry about that. He owes you 20 bucks, right? Yep. I was kind of expecting this. It was the lead-in for a MeUndies ad! Wait, what's MeUndies? I'm, why is this foam? Because it's bear mace. Duh. MeUndies is the most comfortable underwear you haven't tried yet. From all black classics to fun, expressive prints, MeUndies has a look for everyone. Plus, they come in sizes extra small to 4XL, guaranteeing a flattering cut for every body. Why is rubbing it in making it worse? Yeah, it'll do that. But Noah, does MeUndies make more than just undies? They sure do. MeUndies isn't just about underwear. Explore the lounge collection featuring comfy joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. And their Move Me Activewear collection is the softest activewear on the market. Plus, they use sustainably sourced material and work with partners that care for their workers. That sounds amazing. But have you actually tried them? I sure have. Miandi sent us a few pairs of their incredibly comfortable underwear, and I'm never going back. That's why I know Illusions personally endorse MeUndies. Kick off the new year comfier than ever and get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash awful. That's MeUndies.com slash awful for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Where's the sink? All right, Noah, thanks. I might just give those a try. Nice. Uh, so should we get him to the eyewash station or... No, I think we can just leave him for a bit. Is this bowl filled with vinegar? <laughs> you put out vinegar? Like I said, I was expecting this. <laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome to the first ever expert roundtable for Emotion 2.0. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a sequel? Um, nope. No, it, it is not. Then why is it called 2.0? Right. Um, we Because, you know, Windows and like iTunes and and stuff. It, it doesn't matter. Hey, everyone, why don't we just go around, everybody introduce yourselves. Oh, okay. Um, I'm Dr. A. Mike. That's T-O-R-E for legal reasons. I'm an energy fracker uh, and I restructure alignment of chi. 
All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Mike. Uh, Dr. A, please. There's a lawsuit. I uh, really yeah. need you to say. Yep, right. Dr. A, uh, Mike. Um, Megan, how about you? Yeah, I'm Megan. I'm an energy Reiki ancient old wisdom shaman yeti, and I am crystals. Sure. Yeah, straight to the point. Well, look, I couldn't imagine a better group to lead this project. I mean, I could. Well, thank you, Megan. Anyway, um, what we all have in common is, um, well, see, we're all, what I mean to say is that everyone on this project uh, is uh, full of shit. Full of, yes, exactly. Yes. So, you know, do your pitch into a camera and we'll sell it on Tubi for 40 bucks with ads. <gasps> Hooray. So do you think Windows is on version 2.0? Like, could, where's could that? we drop the, 2.0 thing, Doctor? Doctore. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. I'm going to start off with the oldest guy at every commune telling us a story. You know what nudity is really about? Okay, we're yeah, I just, I, they, going they, they to They didn't punch. give us any chirons for like the first few minutes, so I had to come up with ways of describing these people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they're trying to hook you in with the amazing advice they have and starting out as dowser slash author might, yeah. <laughs> might lose a couple of people before they get that sweet, sweet to be 15 minute mark. No, that's fair. Yeah, so the guy's like, I want to share you this anecdote. A woman told me about her husband dying that the husband was on his deathbed and he said, lean in. I don't have much strength. Listen closely so I can only say this once. And I'm like, well, or you could say it twice and skip the fucking preamble, man. I oh, see. When he said, okay, but really listen, I wrote, ah, I see this gentleman was also married to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> what I found super weird about this whole like intro scene where he's like, let me tell you a story. This is an old dude, you know, just face to camera. Let me tell you a story. A woman tells me about her husband and he's dying and he's got a deathbed confession. And then they do like a weird inaction. Like he voiceovers himself yeah. lying in bed being like, I'm dying. It's so yes. creepy and weird. I feel like he probably just started to die on set given his age. And they were like, you know, it would be great, actually. <laughs> right. But this big anecdote that we're starting off with. This guy's dying words were, you know, every morning when you pick your head up off the pillow, you've already got everything that you need. Boo, bad advice. Yes. Boo. Yeah, that's, we're setting a tone here. Right. We're going to stay at that level of privilege throughout. Yep. Yeah. Tell me you're a white guy without telling me you're a fucking <laughs> white guy. Right. Who has access to that website where you like click the button and it gives you a Deepak Chopra random like, pseudo profound right, yes, exactly. one liner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole movie. Right. Yeah. The, the, as soon as he's done, a title card comes up and it says, quote, the subconscious mind defines everything about us, end quote. Yeah, I wrote in my notes. I mean, not like eye color. <laughs> <laughs> and then a fucking a child's gopher puppet that was turned into a real boy comes on. These people will all get names eventually. And he tells us that the mind is like an iceberg. And I'm going, and I'm like, oh God, we're already going 10% of the mind. Are we really in the opening minute? <laughs> oh, I was so excited for 10% of the mind and we didn't get it. That's so cool. He also tells us that the subconscious is 1000 times more powerful than the <laughs> conscious mind. And I was like, what does that mean even in your world? Right? 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 Like, I know what it means about? to me. It's nonsense. It was your turn to say words out loud. But what is he, <laughs> what, how is he measuring the power of Conscious yes. versus unconscious right. mind. Oh. oh, and then fucking Max Headroom's grandpa shows up to tell us we don't need no fancy cars and fast houses or whatever. <laughs> the other way around. But, you know, you know, you get the idea. And then the title card comes up. It says, again, direct fucking quote. If the subconscious mind is that powerful, then what controls it? What? What? I don't know. I have no idea. This whole movie is just a series of what? <laughs> yeah, truly. Like, what was impressive about this movie is that so much of the time, because a lot of the time when we watch these bullshit movies, I'm like, because the earth is flat. Like, I am able to fill in yes. the blank. And mm -hmm. every time they leave a blank in this movie, I'm like, I got no fucking idea, man. <laughs> right. I would love to hear your answer about who controls the subconscious mind because it's powerful. This is I mean, I think this movie is just the secret, right? 
Like pretty much. To, yes. Like really when we like look at it for what it is, it's just it's it's a million different ways to basically say like everything bad that's ever happened to you is because you were sad a lot. And if you just try to manifest really, really hard, like you'll get a new house. Yes. Right. If you right? become unbearable at parties, you'll succeed. Yes. Or, you know, if you delude yourself enough by the end of it, you'll be delusional. <laughs> yes, 100%. And somehow we get there by, I'm pretty sure the thesis here is we get there by cutting loose our steamer trunks of emotion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did they think there was a copyright on emotional baggage that they couldn't <laughs> use that term? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we're not going to be old hat. This is this is new science. This yeah. is yes. brand new right. science we're sharing with you. Emotional baggage? No, no, no. This is steam trunk willy right here. Let me tell you, these are... Uh, I'm allowed to use that one now. So then we get our title, Emotion 2.0. There is so much to hate in this title, not the least of which is the little fucking keyhole in the lowercase e. And I had written that into my notes before the rest of the title turned into a key to unlock it. Fuck yeah. Oh, <laughs> How many times do you think they asked for this from the CGI guys on Fiverr and someone just wrote back like, no, you should kill yourself. I don't want to do, no. <laughs> and also, I hope your whole production house burns down. <laughs> so, and then we have to introduce this couple that we're going to just keep looking at randomly. I have them down as ennui guy and ennui lady, right? Yeah, they're like pseudo pretty. Like, so there's kind of a stark contrast between the talking heads in the film. Yeah, right. and oh, these, yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> these like kind of attractive paid actors who don't have any lines, at least not right away. Nope. And they're just sort of in the background, scene to scene, like, taking pills and eating toast and crying. Or Brushing their teeth. Raging. I bet it was a nice shoot for them, right? They probably just spent an afternoon driving around LA. Yeah, but the question is, did they know what this movie was about? Right. Like, do you think they were duped? Well, and also, like, kudos to these people because they were asked to, like, you know, hey, work out with ennui. And they're like, I guess I can also do that, man. Yeah. We're, we're going to watch them really stretch the boundaries of their acting abilities. Mm -hmm. I feel like they got the best stock photo actors that money could buy, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, are you kidding? This is the laughs at salad lady, okay? She's going to do a great <laughs> job for you guys. I promise. Oh, yeah. It's like they went into like Mind Journey or like one of these like AI programs and they were like, turn this stock photo into moving pictures. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah. got it. <laughs> oh God, we can do that. So we meet them and then we get our first fully Chiron talking head. This is Michelle Schrader, PhD. So she's exactly as educated as, uh, as Kara is. I wrote the same joke. I Googled her and I wrote, see her doctorates in mind body healing, just like you, Kara. <laughs> You're both doctors who did the same amount of work for your doctorates, I'm sure. She is the literal worst in this. She, she has is. zero redeeming quality. She's not even, she doesn't even have a cool mustache. Like there's nothing about <laughs> this woman. Yep. And like her pseudo profound bullshit I think is some of the most dangerous in the film. And she's also by far the least knowledgeable. She just makes shit up as she goes along. Oh, she's my least favorite. And she's the most culturally appropriative. And she, she takes oh, yeah. the longest. Yeah. She opens with this emotions are like a glass of water metaphor, which the movie feels the need to illustrate to us. And the mm -hmm. point she's making is too much is too much. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they needed a visual aid for that. And then we meet the silliest mustache in Texas. <laughs> Fuck yeah. This is like, okay, if he was trying to convince us he had a mustache using nothing but like felt a pair of scissors in the 32 seconds before we walked up the stairs, this mustache would make sense. Otherwise, it makes no fucking sense. It mm -hmm. Literally, I mean, I said it at the beginning. So imagine a guy who's 60 years old. Later, we'll find out he's 39. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Greatest fucking ever. rough. Well, I guess really, really I, it was a pop scare when he announced his yes. age. Later <laughs> <Yeah. in this laughs> 
Amazing. So imagine a guy who's 60 years old with like an epic, he's, is he, yeah, he's wearing an epic cowboy hat. Oh, I call him rhinestone cowboy throughout the Sure, um, sure. I have yeah. him down as cowboy Don because we'll have cowboy Raymond before it's over too. I have to distinguish them. Cowboy Don is is like costume cowboy. Like he is wearing the black Western shirt that like he just took out of the plastic wrap, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like really yeah. bright and pressed. And he's got, okay, so imagine a guy with like pasty white skin and this like gray five o'clock shadow that's like almost the same color as his skin. So you kind of don't notice it's there unless you look closely, but there's a thick gray shadow across his whole lower face. And then there's this black handlebar mustache. What would you call that shape? I don't know. It's not really a handlebar. Archway into hell. Yes, it's like an arch. (laughs) It's like this, I'm like doing it on my face. You guys can't see me. But he has this big, and it is like shoe polish black. Like he painted it. Blacker than the shirt. He's wearing a shirt and it's darker black than the shirt. (laughs) Like he painted it with like temper paint. Yeah, no, you have to like, like promise that you're not going to like look at that mustache on behalf of Anish Kapoor before you're allowed to look at I it. I was just going to say you have to promise you're not Anish Kapoor with that mustache. Ah, <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> and also, so this this is Don Tolman. I immediately reached out to Marsh and said, please have this guy and be reasonable. Please. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And do it on video. <laughs> But his his bio on uh, his website identifies him as, quote, author, public speaker, trainer, imaginist, entertainer, and (laughs) I'm not making this one up, experimental nutritional eating researcher. (laughs) Okay. Experimental (laughs) nutritional eating. Is that wait, is this guy who's like who's like works for Whole Foods? Well, he said he says he's a Whole Foods nutritionist. I don't know if that's the company or if he just means that. But he yeah. stops the avocados and he's like, you know, you should eat one of these. It'll cure your AIDS. And they're like, hey, hey, Don, what did we say about talking to people? And he's like, don't talk to anybody. When you when he writes the word nutrition experiment, do you think he put a baby corn up his nose and just left it there to see if that was a new way of doing nope, it? That doesn't work. Because that's what the Chiron says to me. <laughs> he opened. So when we first see him, like the first things out of his mouth is, I know ancient wisdom. Yes. I came across it, you know, just like as a young guy traveling. And I wrote, always best to hear it from the white guy. Like, I love Obviously, it. yes, I, of course. You know, it's like, he's literally like, I've traveled around to the ancients and they taught me all the things about nutrition. And now I'm going to share them with you. It's crazy that the ancients shared all this wisdom with him, but didn't say, don't dress like you're an extra in a VR ripoff of Red Dead Redemption, right? <laughs> I feel like one of the great ancients no, would mention- you either- have ancient wisdom or that mustache. You don't have both of those. Yes. <laughs> it's not can't. one or the other. Yeah. I think we don't do enough murder. And let me tell you why. <laughs> I should tell you why. The fact that this man has put Imaginist on his website and no one has beaten him to death or choked him until he was dead. <laughs> we, it's too gentle. We're too gentle as a society. We need to we need to turn the amp up so that it's dangerous to call yourself an Imaginist. And I'll, I'll face any consequences for having that uh, opinion. All right. No, no, you won't. I'll, I'm sure I'll edit it out before it's over. <laughs> so... Then we're introduced to Dr. Darren Weissman. They keep putting like the name of these people's books below them as though it's a profession. So this is Dr. Weissman, the lifeline technique. Mm. Yeah, none of these people have actual affiliations. No, and uh-huh. he's a chiropractor. I was going to say, what are their doctorates? This is a very important. We can't just call everybody doctor. Yeah, he's this guy's a chiropractor. Okay, all right. And he explains that all disease is bad emotion. Mm-hmm. I wrote my notes, really? All disease? Like like TB and syphilis <laughs> too? <laughs> yes, damn it. And then we meet Dr. Joe Dispenza. I don't know what he's a doctor. I have him down as generic guy for the rest of the movie because I forgot his name and there's just nothing distinguishing about this person. Yeah, he's like if a tra- if a screen wipe was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I don't remember him at all. Yeah, that's his strength. Like, this whole scene is just missing from my memory. <laughs> yeah, he is the author of such wonderful books as Sunshine and the Power of Words, Awakening the Secret Code of Your Mind, and The Power of Infinite Love and Gratitude. 
No. <laughs> on his website, there's a success story section, and the very first one, the title is No Longer Afraid or Allergic to Everything. <laughs> What? <laughs> so yeah, if you've got some allergies, uh, look up Dr. Joe Screenwipe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we hear him a little bit, and then we go back to Don, who explains that the brain works in pictures. <laughs> pictures, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> he got them damn pictures. Now, the ancient, really, I feel like one of the ancients that gave you that wisdom would have been like, hey, Don, real quick, sorry, I know I gave you the secrets of the universe, but also it's pictures. Pic. <laughs> it's a back glottal. But <laughs> yeah, dang gamut isn't a word, man. I'm sorry. That's also we would throw that in. And this is where I first started noticing how many gesticulations they were doing. Because Don, when he talks, he looks like he's almost doing air nunchucks, right? And the next guy was doing the same fucking thing. We go back to the next guy and he's doing the same gesticulations. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They all took the same course, didn't they? Oh, yeah, they were all prepped. They had the same seminar before they recorded these interviews, I think. Mm -hmm. So then we go back to the hot, depressed people. We got Unwe lady putting on her coat with great melancholy. Unwe guy gets in his sweet 67 cherry red Mustang, heads to work, breaking balls. Yeah, like basically just this whole film, she's crying and he's yelling. Yes. Yeah. Like, I think that's just, they're just these stereotypical, like, I'm mad. I'm sad. I need to manifest more happy. Well, right. And and this is this movie's like vision of people with problems, right? These are well-to-do, mm -hmm. well-off people who have jobs and no major like disabilities or diseases and have plenty of fucking money or whatever, but just feel a little meh. Those are the problems that people face in the world, according to the makers of this film. Right. Right. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you almost get into a car oopsie and they really want to they want to emphasize that trauma for the audience. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is they're not quite meat cuties pulling into work and he almost runs over her. Right. And you thought this was going to be a moment, right? They were going to yell at each other. She was going to cry and we were going to be like, ah, oh, you see trauma. And now we're, but no, they both do that hands gesture where you're not sure whose fault it is about a car thingy. And then they both go like, okay, you go. And then they go and that's it. Yep. That is the fucking trauma that is introduced into this entire fucking film. Mm -hmm. I guess. So, and then we're going to meet, I'm, I'm going to say my third favorite talking head in the movie. This is Jonathan Tripodi, BSC. Now, I had never seen the notation BSC, it's Bachelor of Science, because generally speaking, people with a Bachelor of Science don't try to put fucking letters after their name. Don't fucking alliterize their qualifications. <laughs> yes, Eli Bosnick, BFA, uh, fine arts only. <laughs> Please, no regular only arts for me. Finest <laughs> only the arts. finest yes. of arts. Only the finest of arts to marry the energy of. And doesn't his Chiron literally say body memory? What does what that is mean? That? I don't know. There's no context. He's like, I'm Jonathan Tripodi, bachelor's body memory. Body memory. <laughs> Stayed in college for four years. Your brain is inside your flesh sack. <laughs> yes. And also, he's like in front of a canyon for no fucking reason. Oh, this is Grand Canyon guy. Yes, okay, now uh -huh. I know who we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I love this. So they each of them, basically, they clearly just shot this on green screens in everybody's like houses. Or actually, the, I would say the quality of the interviews is not terrible. Like they did hire somebody to light them. But clearly, they just like put them all in front of different backgrounds. So like one lady is like at the beach and then one guy is in front of a canyon and I have no idea why. Yeah. I'm trying to get yeah. all of nature out there. Yeah. Don's at his horse ranch. Yeah. It's very unclear. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like video games, it's like platformer levels if you think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jonathan's job in this movie will be to give Noah a second heart attack because he just spends the entire time <laughs> taking things that I know Noah is like pretty interested in and then telling a remarkably stupid lie about them. Like, <laughs> you know, um, atoms and molecules are pretty interesting things. And I can hear Noah on the other end being like, well, they, they are pretty interesting things. And he's like, that's why I can push my hand through space. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then we have to meet, oh God, Jesus, these guys are all my third favorite. We're going to have to meet my other third favorite talking head, Dr. Bradley Nelson, who goes by Dr. Brad on his website. 
Mm. So this is the guy. He yeah. is the emotion code guy. Yes, right. I think he's the main guy for this. Yeah, like he's the guy who's selling the bullshit. The sh- he hired the two camera teenagers yes. to make Emotion 2.0 100%. possible. Yeah, yeah. So what is Dr. Brad's doctor in? Do we know? Oh, once again, I, I, I have no idea. I went to his website and everything. It says on his website that he is, quote, an internationally renowned teacher and healer with a passion for creating healers out of everyone on earth, end quote. But that's all the detail I could find on everyone what on type earth. of medicine he practices. <laughs> It says DC, Dr. Bradley Nelson, comma, DC, parentheses, retired, close parentheses. Ooh, oh, doctor of chiropractic? Yep, he's a holistic chiropractic physician and medical there intuitive. Oh my Got God. Got it in one, baby. Chiropractic physician and medical intuitive. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. That's, that rules. Can I do that? <laughs> I just medical walk in the room intuitive. and I'm like, let me guess. Syphilis? Oh, no, you're pregnant. <laughs> well, I knew it was your vag, so, you know. Well, if you take his course for the low, low price of $1,500, of course you can do it. Yes. Well, right, cause he's, he, yes, because he's inspired to create healers out of everyone on Earth. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, and every for a price. five. Everyone. Every line on his website. Get certified. Get certified. Click here to get certified. Oh, you can God. take our emotion code certification program. Yeah, let me tell you how much it costs. Hang on. So yeah, energy healing certificate. So they have three different ones. They have emotion code R in a circle, body code TM and belief code R in a circle, certification courses. So it's level one, level two and level three. Got it. Yeah. Just like a real college. Just like a real mm-hmm. college. Okay, so level one is $997 plus Oh my tax. fucking God. A bargain, a bargain. Yeah. Less expensive than what you paid for your doctorate, Kara. Way Come less on. expensive. Level two is $1,497 plus tax. Extra $500 worth of bullshit in that yeah, one. Fine print. Please note that all course requirements must be submitted within six months, 183 days from the date of purchase. After that time, students will need to purchase course re-enrollment in order to complete certification. Okay, and then level three... Oh, where's level three? I think it costs the same as level two. Oh, this is this is a deal. This is a deal. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. Yeah, no, only four thousand dollars ultimately for level three bullshit. That's pretty good. So, and then we get Cowboy Don. He has to come on. He's going to do this a couple of times. He's going to have to come on and misdefine words for us here and there. Oh yeah. Oh, I hate this. Okay, I want to be clear, and and correct me if I'm wrong on this. Does Cowboy Don ever correctly? define a word in this movie. No. no. Okay. No, he correctly uses a few of them, but he constantly, he <laughs> does shit like this. He goes, well, you know, like uh, emotion means energy movement. I'm like, no, it doesn't. No, the fuck it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It literally means to move out, to remove, to agitate, to push away. And I looked up the etymology of the term. Emotion was like first used before the word energy was ever used. <laughs> It, <laughs> right. like, it can't sure. mean energy movement because that word didn't exist yet. Jesus fucking Christ. And then Michelle shows back up. She's got this weird. All right. So so you you tell me, Carrie, you're the brain person. Oh, God. When you have testicular cancer, does your brain draw a little bullseye around it in your brain? <laughs> On the balls part of your brain? You know the, <laughs> the balls, balls part, part of the brain, yes. Carrie? You don't have one, obviously, because you don't have balls. Well, it doesn't but matter. But if you did have balls, there'd be that spot. On your brain for your balls. It doesn't matter because apparently... And your brain points to it. It's in the same spot. Like John Madden. Yeah. Did you notice? She says like, you know, testicular, ovarian, liver. Like it doesn't matter what kind of cancer. She literally claims and they show a picture that some physician discovered in his patients that when they had cancer, the way he was able to diagnose it is because he did an MRI or a CAT scan or something. And there was literally a bullseye like like a physical drawing of a bullseye on top of a spot and it looked like it was sort of in like the frontotemporal region it makes no sense like not only do we know enough about the brain to know that is not the region where this would happen but also the thing they're saying happened doesn't make sense at all and What's even worse is it doesn't even support her fucking point because then she has to say. And so we asked them what they were thinking about when that happened. And they would say, you know, they were thinking about their kids dying or they were thinking about their their puppy that died or whatever. And then and that's how he knew that the sadness was causing the cancer. 
Ah, oh, what a piece of what? shit thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Look, I know that the two things that I've established about you as a person is that your child died and you now have testicular cancer. But I just marched in here to let you know that you're really fucking this up, okay? You're really, <laughs> really making this worse for yourself. And luckily, when I did a brain scan on you, there was a fucking bullseye. Yeah, there's a bullseye. There's a bullseye on your blood cancer spot, exactly. <laughs> So then fucking John Canyon man, Tripoldi BSC shows up to tell us about the wonders of connective tissue. Fascia, oh, babe. Oh, yeah. I haven't heard fascia bullshit since I was in acting school and people told me to act from my fascia. This was a call. <laughs> this was a callback for me, guys. I really enjoyed this. This was nice. Well, in case you're not aware, fascia is a protein that tells your ear how your big toe is feeling. Is that about? Correct? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I don't know. It rules so much because fascia theory, right, is like almost close to kind of sort of accurate if an alien had to dissect a human in a hurry. So basically what fascia theory is, is like your body has lots of connective tissue. How do they define connective tissue? Whatever the fuck I want it to mean. Because sometimes it means like the literal connective tissue, but sometimes it's just like any collagen or elastin deposits in your body anywhere. And so what fascia theory posits is that all that stuff is literally and physically connected. Like you have a fucking Stretch Armstrong of fascia running <laughs> throughout your body. Yeah, it's like they heard the word connective tissue and they go, oh, everything's right. connected to everything. And it's like, no, 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 connective tissue like connects, you know, different types of tissue to each other. That's yes. all it is. Like that's not, it doesn't mean your ear is connected to your toe. So really this opens up the door to like, iridology, phrenology, mm -hmm. reflexology, you know, yep. all the bullshit pseudosciences where it's like, if I poke you on your foot right here, it's going to cure your liver, blah, blah, blah. And they just exactly. keep yeah. coming back to that over and over. But before we do, Cowboy Don has to show back up and tell us now that symptom means sign of chaos. Oh, yeah. Are we failing some kind of quiz? That's what it feels <laughs> like. He's like, oh, and another thing, this apple is blue. <laughs> nope, nobody's going to stop me. This is a bad world, right? Where I could just say this apple's blue. Yeah. Nobody. All right. Totally legal. Okay. Yeah. And so, and then as we're talking, of course, we watch Ennui Lady get into the elevator with much Ennui. John Kenyon, man, he comes up and he goes, you know, the AMA says that 80% of health issues are stress related. And there's a lot of problems with the way he's employing that sentence. But I, the first thing I want to pluck out of it is like, all right, man. So we're using the AMA as an authority. Right. Right. I, I, what does the AMA say about all the other dumb connective tissue shit you just said? <laughs> I feel like this happens so much with pseudoscience. It's like they pick and I mean, that's why it's pseudoscience, right? Because there's always like a kernel of something legitimate in there and they'll sure. pick and choose. They'll be like, but science says, and I'm like, you can't do that. You don't get the privilege of using science. Right. Because you've just shown us that science doesn't matter to you, that you're more interested in magic. Yeah, well, because immediately after invoking the AMA, he starts invoking, you know, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine and said, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. he says traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine understood that emotions affect the body. And I'm like, I mean, to be fair, all the old medicines understood that emotions <laughs> affected the body. I don't As think do the new ones. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Like this idea. OK, health issues and stress are related. Okay, stress and yep. disease are related. And then the very next sentence, so you can think yourself sick. No. No. Nope. <laughs> can't do that. I can't just like I can't just like think really 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 hard and then I have RSV. Right. It doesn't work that way. And then he then he does that amazing oh, I love this section so much cuz that's when he does the stupid like metaphors become reality in your body thing, right? He's like, people who are grieving have lung issues. Oh, if you yeah. feel obligated, it's in your knees. I wrote right. my notes. This is the worst <laughs> magic show I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Didn't the stupid woman come on the heels of that and be like, you know, yes. when the weight of the world is on your shoulders, you get like your neck hurts. Yes, yes, because it's a whole planet. That would be very heavy on your shoulders. So yeah, so we got we have two more talking heads we have to meet now. We meet Elaine Harriet, Elaine Harriet, 
Anyway, I had him down as Max Hedrum's grandpa earlier. He's going to chime in here and there. He's the author of The Wonder Method. Yes. Also, the books Quantum Touch and Super Quantum Touch, in case (laughs) regular Quantum Touch doesn't cut it, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> Finished his first book. Fuck! Ah, I forgot butthole. Sorry, everybody. We gotta we gotta do a sequel. We gotta do a sequel. And we also meet Nassim Haramain with the delightfully promising Chiron, quote, physicist and director of the Resonance Project. Oh, mm. I love hate him. They only use him once, though. Did yes. you guys notice that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt cheated out of my Nassim. <laughs> yeah. To be fair. This is the most coherent sentence I think he's ever spoken. I went down a YouTube (laughs) rabbit hole of Nassim Harriman. He doesn't have a long enough movie for us to review, but I just watched video after video where he'd be like, you guys like math? Well, how about tomatoes? (laughs) It's not illegal to be wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he comes on for just a second. He goes, inside the nucleus of every atom, is information on every other atom in the universe. And before you can say, what the fuck are you talking about? He's disappeared from our lives never to return. Yeah, he literally is like, I've written mathematics that brings concepts. (laughs) What? I'm like, what? You sure haven't, man. (laughs) We also meet, oh, sorry, we have the third talking head. This is where we meet Sonia Choquette. Mm Mm-hmm. I have her as the oldest lady at the orgy. She's the founder of Sixth Sensory Living, whatever the fuck that is. Really hope that's a retirement home for psychics. That's what I'm aiming for. (laughs) So, and then we meet uh, also my third favorite of all of the talking heads. This is Dr. Amelia Hardwick. Again, I don't know, doctor, what she, but she's, I think she's actually. She has a PsyD. Yeah, yeah. So she has. A similar degree. So I have a PhD in clinical psychology. She has a PsyD. So a PhD requires that you do like academic research. It requires a dissertation. A PsyD is basically like an applied psychology doctorate. So everything is clinically focused. And instead of doing a dissertation, very often they'll do like a case study or something like that. But she did technically get, that means she has to have an undergraduate in psychology. And then she got a graduate degree, a doctorate in psychology. And this scares the living shit out of me. Yes. Yeah. Truth be told, though, I want to look into it because she may not be licensed. Like she does. I think she sees patients, but does she see them as a psychologist? I don't know. I am very scared for her patients. This woman is so dangerous. Yeah. Also, why is Jennifer Coolidge playing her in the first place is my (laughs) question. I don't understand. (laughs) Was she doing a study for a Legally Blonde 4 that we didn't get to see in theaters? See, I I looked at her website. It's covered in fucking butterflies and it says heal, transform, ascend across it. And I'm just like, there's no fucking way you have a legitimate degree. (laughs) I guess. Yeah, Kara, that's a good question. When someone gets a legitimate degree and then loses their shit, do they quietly come and take it away from you? Because I think if you don't like take out someone's liver and eat it in front of them, you're till still technically all the right letters at the end of your chiron, right? Well, that's the thing, right? So this woman, yes, she still has her PsyD, but from her website, I could be wrong, from her website, it doesn't look like she has a license. Interesting. Because she she kind of books herself as a, she, she offers coaching and therapy. And so oftentimes when you see people who offer coaching sessions, like a lot of people have told me I should do this. I don't really know if I feel comfortable with it. But for me, for example, I got my PhD in clinical psychology, but I'm not yet licensed because I just got my PhD. So I have to do a postdoc. I have to get even more hours and take even more courses and then take a licensing exam. And I have to keep my licensing exam up to date, which means continuing education credits. And until I have my license, I'm not allowed to practice independently. I have to practice under the supervision of a licensed psychologist. But some people get around that by instead of offering psychology services and instead of like, you know, having people fill out HIPAA compliant paperwork and informed consent and all the legal things you have to do if you're a psychologist, they just offer quote coaching sessions and you don't need any sort of license or there's no there's no regulation for coaching interesting that's just like a made-up thing and she is offering coaching a lot on her website which makes me think she doesn't have a psychology license all right so dr amelia very sus 
Yeah, very sus. We also bring back fucking Dr. Brad for a second. This is where he tells us that he's cured people with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. Yeah. Right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, look, really, no more Gellin's disease in there, man. You know, you never cared of more Gellin's, okay, some more Gellin's. We also meet Robert Smith. He's just Robert Smith. No pretensions on this motherfucker. <laughs> I can't even pretend. I clicked that certification thing and I was like, $900, I'll just start lying. <laughs> and indeed I did. <laughs> I had a moment when this guy started talking and he said that he's cured cancer. Mm -hmm. There was a moment where you, I felt like I watched him cross a Rubicon, which was really interesting. Like it was a very interesting performance to watch him be like, yeah, there's all sorts of diseases like cancer. And I was like, ooh, yeah, I saw you damn yourself to hell. Like I, in his head, he was signing a fiery contract for a man with red skin and a long blood red quill. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, buddy, that is an evil thing to say. You did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, obviously, we can't expect Kara to relive the trauma of this movie without periodic breaks. So we're going to take a minute off, but we'll be back soon with even more Emotion 2.0. Hey, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Kara Santa Maria. I'm terrible with money. And I'm not, but we can still both use Rocket Money. What's Rocket Money? Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. So I can see all my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Okay, but have either of you actually used it? I sure have. I signed up for Rocket Money when they became a sponsor. And now that certain other expense tracking websites have gone the way of the dino, I recommend it to anyone who wants to keep better track of their budget in the new year. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse Rocket Money. And Eli's not the only one. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Rocket Money. Because good or bad at money, you should probably be keeping track. You're like really bad. Thank you, Kara. They get it. No, like really bad. Okay. Give me a ladder truck over here. I need way more pressure. You got it, Chief. Uh, I'm sorry. Can I help you, sir? Namaste. I'm here to help. Are you a firefighter? EMT? <laughs> no, friend. I'm a manifestation expert, and I'm here to put out that fire. Oh, really? And how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to open myself up to the universe, and then the universe will put out that fire. Oh, well, so I guess you don't need us. Oh, uh, I mean, you can still do your work. I'm just also going to be doing mine. No, no. Look, if you're going to put out the fire, don't let me stand in your way with all these hoses and stuff. Hey, Greg. Yeah, Chief? Uh, this this guy's going to put out the fire. Uh, we don't need to worry about it. Oh, what a relief. Uh, maybe you guys could just hang around in case. Hey, you know, just to... don't, you know, don't you talk about yourself like that, man. You are open to the universe, and you are going to put out that fire. See ya. Okay. Um. Yep, here we go. Open to the universe. My baby! I'm working on it. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Cowboy Dan pointing out that when you have a headache, you know, you know how headaches get worse when you think about them, <laughs> which no, that's not. I don't know that. I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck he's talking about. What a weird cold chat. Like so much of this is bad. I, I, not to get too like long tail marketing here, but as someone who's done a lot of mental magic in their life, I've <laughs> never seen more bad mentalism in a fucking movie. You know how when you fell when you were a kid and you have a scar on your right knee? Well, that's why you can cure your cancer with lemon juice. It's just <laughs> fucking weird. Is it not a red card? <laughs> 
So yeah, so but this is where they're going to start telling us about the importance of detoxing. You knew we were getting there, right? Oh yeah, and also how like antidepressants are neurotoxins. Yes, and so is so acetaminophen. Yeah, if a headache yeah. Yeah, apparently, apparently yeah. neurotoxin. They yeah, block our quote signal. They just they just use words. They just they say just words. Any old word. <laughs> Can I say I'm jealous? Yeah, I'm jealous. I would love to be as confident about the things I say as these fucking assholes are. I am constant. Oh, I hope that came out right. And the people like, blah, 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 blah. it would be so nice to just be like, Psh, hot pockets. Now them's a neurotoxin. All right. What you're going to need to do <laughs> is get four tomatoes and a full moon. Right. <laughs> Dr. Brad comes back. He's like, you know, 90% of the pain we feel is due to trapped emotions. And I'm like, well, you haven't fallen off enough stages. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I would like Dr. Brad to get in a car crash. I mean, I mean yeah. that generally, but I, I also just mean it about smack his- him, right? Like yeah, I could just yeah. smack him one good time and be like, okay, now it's 89%. <laughs> now get your emotions. Keep your emotions chill. I bet we could convince Dr. Brad if we took it serious enough, we could convince Dr. Brad to do a demonstration of how slapping doesn't hurt him after he's meditated and we would all get a chance to slap him. <laughs> we could do this together. And the whole time he'd be like, the, the, molecu- the molecules, yeah, he'd be like, oh, the molecules. <laughs> His face just swelling. They love those words though. They love the word like cell. They don't know what mm-hmm. cells are, but they love to reference cells. And apparently cells trap all sorts of things. They love neurotransmitters. They love receptors. They love molecules. Download. Oh, download. download. Big a lot fans of, down- of download. There, I think at some point there's a schematic of a baby and then there's like a little save icon on the baby's yes. head and like a down <laughs> arrow. Right. Yes, like it's, it's yeah. downloading emotions. It's downloading yeah. emotion. And they love how like, and but they put them all together. So they'll literally talk about negative emotional molecules. Yeah. Like they think th- these are real things. Yep. Well, and, and so, and this is what I love so fucking much about these stupid ass movies and, and their tenuous grasp on the therefore concept. <laughs> After explaining for this entire movie that every bad thing is because of negative emotions, right? 90% of our pain, all of our disease, everything is bad emotions. Suddenly, Dr. Amelia comes up and she's like, also, think of all the air pollution and the pesticides on our food. And I'm like, well, that wouldn't matter, right? Because it's emotions. It was that the entire premise of this fucking movie is that I could eat directly out of Monsanto's dumpster and it wouldn't fucking matter as long as I had a positive attitude about it, right? <laughs> no, but Noah, clearly you weren't listening because she explained herself so well. She said <laughs> negative emotions that are in your cells, right? They're bad. And when you eat pesticides, the negative emotions seal the pesticides into oh, your the pesticide. Yeah, they're sort of like, you know how you have to <laughs> primer, <laughs> coat of paint, primer, finish? Yeah, that's what the <laughs> pesticides are doing. And something about a lock and a key because emotion 2.0. Right, yeah. yes. Yeah. Exactly. I like these movies because they appeal to the kind of stupid I am, which is fun, right? Like, they're like, what don't people know? And I'm like, what don't I know? And they're like, do you know how cells work? And I'm like, I fucking don't. And they're like, yeah, well, that's because cells pesticides, pesticides, pesticides lock in the negative emotions. And I'm like, couldn't tell you they don't. <laughs> Better not tell me mitochondria isn't the powerhouse of the cell because that I am very clear on. But other than that, as long as you, don't uh, you and me know equal amounts about cells. <laughs> Emotion 2.0. Mitochondria a bit much. Yeah, they definitely yeah. don't use that word at all in this document. That's, they're like, oh, Mitoka, I, that's too much. That's above oh, my big grade. <laughs> so, and then Dr. Darren comes out, because hey, like up until now, it's just been kind of silly and funny and you have to think about it for a bit for it to get poisonous and despicable. But this is where Darren Weissman shows back up to make that clear, right? Where he comes mm-hmm. up and he's like, look, nobody is born broken, right? Nothing happens by accident. Yeah, that's not a loaded fucking sentence right oh there. my fucking god and i'm like Look, <laughs> yeah. yeah nobody's born broken sure man but people are born disabled people are born with like medical conditions that limit the things that they can do your entire philosophy is telling those people that that is their fault yeah like so okay here's a perfect example and eli i know that you can relate to this and probably like every listener of the show can relate or they know somebody who can i am a clinical psychologist 
who has put a lot of effort into understanding mental illness. I go to therapy. I do a lot of lifestyle changes to try to kind of approach my, you know, and and make my clinical depression something that I can function with. I've had depression since I was a child. I think of myself as being in sort of remission because I have a lot of coping mechanisms. I'm high functioning. I'm very lucky in that regard. If I miss two, do- this just happened to me a couple of weeks ago. If I miss two doses of my SSRI, just two, I wake up crying. <laughs> like yep. I literally, w- and like, I'm like, what is wrong? Oh yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. That <laughs> pill, that the pill, pill is what I need. Yes. The thing that I take that, and there's, don't get me wrong. There are all sorts of other components to depression. And I work really, really hard at it. But basically what they're saying is that is not real. Yeah, right. Like I No, just you're just to... holding on to emotions from yeah. when your mom was pregnant with you or whatever. Right, right. So then how do they explain that when I do take my meds, I don't wake up crying? Yeah. How do they explain that? Emotions. How do they explain medicine? Emotions. Are there different... Medicine emotions. I found that offensive, but can I tell you what upset me most about this talking head section? It was when they put the little After Effects Kamehameha light in between his hands (laughs) while he gestured. They give him the little orb. (laughs) Who did that? He is talking. There's no, he's not demonstrating anything. He's not like visualizing anything. He's just talking and we see him go like, shwing. (laughs) Was the editor just having a fight? He was like, oh, you know what? I actually bought a whole pack of these visual effects. What if I did this? And they were like, fuck yeah. That's it's, great. Uh, this is also God. my favorite. Ex- and look, I've heard a lot of bad explanations for why you're fat. This is my favorite, <laughs> which is, yes. you see, if you're sad, you feel small and you don't take up space in the world. So your body gets fat. <laughs> yes. So that you can take up to space in the world. Save for all the space you didn't take up. Right. And I was like, okay, maybe she means it as a metaphor. And she's like, and I want to be clear. I don't mean that as a metaphor. <laughs> right. It's not about the amount of food you eat. I mean that you physically grow larger magically. Yes. And I was like, fuck yeah, talking heads. Fuck yeah. Yeah. What does this sentence mean? Every so-called problem of the body is a portal. What do any of the sentences mean? <laughs> it's a great question. Do, do you notice that they have to like legally, because they've they've clearly all dealt with a lot of lawsuits. And so mm-hmm. you'll, you'll hear, they'll be like talking so much nonsense and then they'll go, I mean, in my experience. Yes. <laughs> they have to like keep <laughs> qualifying Hypothetically. Everything. Yeah. Oh. And this is the point where I start getting mad in the documentary because I had cancer. And like they keep saying that you've got all this, tra- their their big talking point is trapped emotions, right? Yes. That you have these trapped emotions from previous traumas. And if you don't feel your feelings and you don't process those emotions, then they build up and build up and they manifest as physical illness. And they keep talking about cancer, right? Like you just have to feel your emotions and then your cancer will go. I feel my feelings. All the fucking time. I clearly not. Why did I get cancer? I wrote in my notes, Kara, did you get cancer because you haven't forgiven me for my prank websites? I wrote that in here somewhere. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. Kara, do you think I, you got cancer? That is a much more cancer? reasonable explanation, Eli. Because you haven't forgiven me for my prank websites. Would you like to do that on air now to prevent you from getting future cancers? That's what I wrote. So I like how you're taking zero responsibility in this scenario. Well, he's not I the one with the cancer. cancer. My, no, my emotions are open and broad. <laughs> I'm feeling totally that you did 9-11 and you're a dead people. Dentist. <laughs> I'm unafraid. I'm living my truth. I'm manifesting. I can't say shit. I had a heart attack, so clearly I'm not feeling my emotions either. No, we're yeah. none of us. That's the thing. Like, I mean, I know we keep saying it over and over, and I know that this is like an old trope and it's nothing new, but like this is really dangerous. Yes. What they're what they're peddling is really dangerous because it's just the it's it's fundamentally victim blaming. It's taking people who have struggled in the world because of things that they had zero control over and saying, no, but really deep down, you did have control over it. You're not sure how. You can't figure out how to access it. That's a failure on your part. Just pay me a little bit more money and I'll help unlock you. Then you'll be at level two and you can finally know why you got cancer. 
It's every fucking cult. Every cult follows this exact same playbook. Well, and of course, it's also when it's, it, it, you know, it's every bit as insidious in that it tells people, it gives people permission to ignore the suffering of other people too, right? Like, so it's oh, not just your cancer is your fault, but it's also like, well, you know, your sister who has cancer, you don't really have to like hit. That's her shit. That's she's she, she just needs to unlock her emotions and get the pesticides out of her cells and mm -hmm. then she'll be fine. It's not uh, incumbent to upon you to help her because she's less fortunate. She did that shit to herself. Right, exactly. She just needed to eat a whole lemon every morning. <laughs> right. It also like, it undermines the entire field of cancer biology. Like, let's not forget that. Mm -hmm. It's so insulting to anyone and everyone who's dedicated like tirelessly and oftentimes very thanklessly their career to understanding tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes and carcinogens and all of the different kind of components of cancer biology. Well, right. And when this stupidity gets ubiquitous enough, it starts to affect things like funding for that research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. And now we meet uh, my second favorite talking head <laughs> in the movie. Yes, I'm, I'm promoting this motherfucker. This is Raymond Grace. And Raymond is underqualified even by this movie's Chiron's <laughs> standards. He is yes. listed as... Dowser and author. Fuck yeah, baby. <laughs> Write stuff down, points at stuff with sticks. And he's probably, <laughs> I'd say that he is also in this film, we can probably call him cowboy number two. Yes, like there yes. Are, I have him as cowboy Raymond. <laughs> yeah, there are many cowboys in this film, but like cowboy Don or Dan or whatever his name is and Cowboy Raymond are like central casting cowboys. Yeah, absolutely. And Cowboy Raymond's mouth and body and sound could not less match the things he's saying, right? <laughs> he sounds like, who's that Sam guy that turns out to be problematic? The oh. Oh, um, cowboy man. I'll talk yeah, like he was the, in the Lady Gaga. And yeah, everyone's Bradley all wet yeah, for yeah. him because he yeah, talks yeah. slightly lower than a normal person. Yeah. yeah, That's how Raymond talks, except he's like, you gotta learn to accept your chi and get on the ranch <laughs> with your <laughs> really nine weird. chakras of the fuck. I just imagine that, like, how many old country buffets has someone scooted up next to him at the diner and been like, hey, old Salt, how's Can it you going? He's like, well, a good yeah, right. I'm just manifesting my destiny, and they're like, "Holy <laughs> fucking shit, what?" Like, forget trans kids and gay pride parades. Let's just send Raymond Grace around. Governor Abbott will shoot himself in the mouth with a t-shirt gun if we can put him in a room with Raymond <laughs> Grace for ten minutes. Oh, you're so. He'll be like. Raymond Grace is too woke for me. That Dow too much, <laughs> too much, too woke. That Dowsing. Oh my god! And he's he's legitimately a Dowser. Like mm -hmm. it blows my mind that these people still exist. It's such. It's the dumbest possible pseudoscience. It's oh, it's in a Ouija board. Dowsing is Ouija board. Yes, That's, it's the same thing. It's honestly, Ouija, Ouija board is like a sophisticated form of dowsing. Thank you. I was yes. going to say, Ouija boards look way less silly. You get to hold hands with someone. Yeah, dowsing <laughs> is if you lost your, like the pieces to your Ouija board set. And then <laughs> right, you're like, yeah. this like little pendulum will do. Like I'll just hang yeah. a thimble from a piece of string. It's fine. Don't worry. He's going to demonstrate some dowsing for us before it's all over. We're going to get back to him. But then we also have to have the dude who comes in generic guy who comes in and tells us about how our temperament is our emotional refractory period. And I'm like, you're just daring me to make cum jokes now. They right? sure are. Yeah. If your refractory <laughs> period lasts for weeks or months, talk to your doctor. <laughs> Which is what he's saying. Yeah. And then Michelle comes on. I think she's like trying to answer Kara's question about if she feels her feelings, so why did she get cancer, right? Because this is where Michelle comes on and she goes like, well, you know, you may think you've forgiven somebody, but maybe your liver hasn't forgiven them yet. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, and they... Now, I again, I think they sort of dance around it in the least tasteful way possible, but there does seem to be a moment where she's like, and look, maybe you were sexually assaulted and you need to stop being so weird about that. It's making right. you sick. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Just, you know, get over it and smile. So it, they, this is where Robert Smith comes in to talk about the placebo and nocebo thing. He gets both of those terms wrong. Yeah, impressively wrong. I'm so tired of people making arguments about the placebo effect as if it's an actual thing. Yeah. Like it it blows my mind. Like they, a placebo is a lack 
of an active ingredient. That's all it is. A placebo is nothing. When people talk about the quote placebo effect, they're not actually talking about the lack of active ingredient doing something. They're talking about non-specific effects. They're talking about things like expectation effects. Right. They're talking about things like when people go see a doctor, even if they don't get medicine, being heard and having somebody listen to them reduces their stress. And that can actually have positive outcomes for them. It's not literally that if you like think hard enough, you'll cure yourself. Right. That's not what a placebo is. Yeah. And look, we've heard placebo bullshit before, right? We hear it all the time. And and well-intentioned non-con men get what the placebo effect is wrong on a pretty regular Mm -hmm. basis. It's fine. It's a confusing thing for non-professionals. But this nocebo effect thing, that was new for me. I was very excited when he was like, and then the nocebo effect is when medicines don't work. And I was like, I feel like it's not that, right? It can't be that. (laughs) Yeah, the nocebo effect is technically the opposite of the placebo effect, but it's not really the opposite because it's the same thing. It's expectation effects just in the other direction. It's that if somebody thinks that something is going to be harmful, then they might you know, have these expectation effects of harm. And then there are some psychological components that make them feel like they've been harmed. It's it's the exact same phenomenon, just in the quote opposite direction. Yeah, well, it it like the, the Robert Smith guy, he gives away the game, right? Because he's like, well, there was this scientific study. I'm not going to mention it. You don't know her. She's from Canada, where they gave people fake radiation therapy and they still lost their hair. You know, and like a third of them still lost their hair. But you also don't lose your hair from radiation. You lose your hair from chemo. Well, yeah, they, they, they expect him to get that correct. But but then, <laughs> but like, my question is like, okay, but what did it do to the cancer? then <laughs> right like if you're saying it like cause people to lose their hair well like we know that there are psychological reasons like stress reasons why you can lose your hair yeah right that that's a thing that stress can can cause but is there a fucking version of this where their cancer got better if not shut the fuck up about uh- it Right. I'd also I'd really like to talk to that review board that was like, oh, you want to give people fake radiation (laughs) radiation, and and you want to kill the other half? Yeah, no, that works. That's okay. That's cool. (sighs) That's cool. Go ahead and try that one out. But but hey, hey, write down your shit. okay? none of this sloppy handwritten note stuff. I want it typed up at the end of the day when you kill all those kids with leukemia. I just noticed, Noah, that both of us wrote the same thing here. We both wrote, how is this different from Scientology? Right, because this is where they start talking about like how, like even when you you were in in utero, you could catch like your parents' bad emotions and shit. And I'm like, okay, now we're just doing Scientology. Yeah. Yeah, like you just need to come in for a reading, right? You just need like with the e-meter and all that. It's like, it's no different. And of course, this is the part that personally for me was the most insulting is when Dr. Amelia comes up and she starts talking about like uteruses and how like women, it's so funny. She's like, this myth that women can't have children after a certain age. I mean, it's a myth. Although, I mean, after a certain age, it's not a myth. Yes, but like, right. it's like the funniest thing. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? And then she literally is so non medical and non-scientific. She like hymns and haws and can't use words like uterus or fallopian tube or vagina or cervix or vulva. She says like, you know, like your female organs and she kind of waves her hand around (laughs) and she was like, there's just too much emotional debris. Right. So I think I got cervical cancer. Do you think there was a cut where she called it like your vajussy where she was like, and look, there's there's too much emussies in your vajussy. Yeah, she was like, (laughs) ha Your hoo-ha has the sads. And so, like, <laughs> so what I took away from that is that my female organs have emotional debris and that's why I got cervical cancer. But if yes. I just, if I clear out my emotional debris, I could probably make babies, even though I don't have a uterus anymore. Yeah. Probably if I think hard enough. That's why I stopped crumpling up my journal pages and putting them in my butt because I don't want rectal cancer. That's exactly <laughs> it makes, what. It makes sense. Emotional debris. Right. No, but so it's, yeah, she, she explains that sometimes, yeah, sometimes the infertility. Yeah. Sometimes that's the thing, but sometimes it's just that your uterus is sad because of an abortion. Mm -hmm. She uses that as a fucking example. And then she explains that she met a woman one time. She had a client, uh, a patient that was 44. I don't think she uses the word patient. Does she? She, I think she she better not. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Coaching friendo. Right. Yeah. Right. (laughs) She says she, she there's a 44 year old woman, and once she cleared her, that lady's emotion, boom, she had twins. Well, and what's weird is she actually points out that the lady was having IVF. Right. She was like, oh, she did everything. <laughs> she was going through IVF, but then you know 
She did coaching with me. Boom, twins. That thing famously caused by, by IVF. IVF. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, she, and Dr. Amelia goes, I could even show you their picture. And I'm like, what would that prove? That no, there are two twins? babies. You got me. You got also, me. There was two babies in that photo. Totally not a, not a HIPAA violation at all. Yeah, right, right again. I guess it's not if you're a made up doctor, though. You right, can yeah. Do whatever yeah. You want. No HIPAA's required coach, here at the coaching it. spot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, and then Darren explains that your subconscious mind also broadcasts all those trapped emotions, which seems weird if they're trapped. <laughs> right. Like, not sure how that works. But we get a visual representation to, in case you can't see, can't imagine that. We see Ennui Guy with rings coming out of his head. So that's what that would look like. In case mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then he literally says like the dude's dad and mom's emotions download to the baby and they show a schematic like they paid somebody to do yes. like a really shitty illustration. There's a binary code raining onto the fetus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there's a little save icon with a down arrow. So I think he's trying to use the word download metaphorically, but not. Like he actually thinks that's how this works, is that emotions rain on fetuses. Yeah, well, as Kara, as someone who has just finished David Icke's absolute fucking tome of everything they want you to know or don't want you to know or whatever the fuck it was, it was 8 billion <laughs> pages and we just finished it. What I've learned is that bullshit artists are aware that electronics words exist, but have no relationship to them in reality. So that's why we're getting a lot of downloads and mm, matrixes here. Yeah, right, right. But the, but the key here, though, is that sometimes the bad shit that happens to you isn't your fault. It's your mom's fault. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's the yeah. key takeaway. And then we, <laughs> and we and we see on we lady at this point, she's in a bar and she's flirting with a hot dude. But then he just walks off because, of course, she was projecting negativity at him, apparently. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So then yeah. she just drinks her wine. Yeah. She gets so sad. She goes immediately back to the on we face. Mm hmm. And we also have the Dowser, right? So this is like the Sam, what's his name, cowboy, mm -hmm. trying to give us his opinion on child psychology, which the fuck do I care what this guy thinks about child right. psychology? You're a Dowser. Yeah. And at one point, this is my favorite line in the whole movie, you guys. He says, this is patterns. <laughs> this is patterns. <laughs> so. And can I say, he's not wrong. It is patterns. Nope. And I know it sounds like I'm giving you that decontextualized. No. no. <laughs> That's just no. what this is pattern. It would be impossible to contextualize any sentence said in this movie <laughs> because no one sentence relates to the next sentence. No, that's true. Yeah, exactly. But Eli, this is patterns. This is patterns. <laughs> So then, so this is a great line too. This one really stuck with me and we all had the same note immediately after this as well. This is where Dr. Brad pops in and he's going to tell us how much better our subconscious mind is at remembering shit than our conscious mind. But the example he uses to open up is he's like, you know, our conscious mind doesn't remember very well. We don't remember what we had for breakfast yesterday. And then we all wrote, don't we? I yeah, do. I do. Who the fuck doesn't remember what they had for breakfast yesterday? Like you should see someone, Doctor Brad. <laughs> yeah, it does. It is an interesting insight into Doctor Brad's mind. He's like, I reset entirely every twenty four hours. All I do, I read the certifications on the wall. I walk into my office, and that's my life. I'm I'm mementoing, and no one has noticed yes, for the last right. thirteen years. Why? Right? Because he also says it's not just that I don't remember what I had for breakfast. He also says we don't remember what we had for breakfast yesterday, or where our laptop is, or our keys, or right. our wallet. And I'm like, you have dementia. I'm like that. <laughs> like I'm worried about Doctor Brad. Who our children are? <laughs> what? Oh, this next part is my favorite. Okay, so after this, they have this like animation of blood. And they're like, your blood pumps your feelings. Like your yes. emotion molecules pump through yes. your blood. So literally like 
He's like, your blood is pumping your frustration. Yep. And there are these receptors in your blood that m- bind the emotion molecules. And for the what I wrote was, I they forgot to teach me about those in all the <laughs> biology yeah, classes. I, you, like, you, it's a side thing. You got to do a summer yeah. class to learn about the jealousy and frustration <laughs> they, chemicals. They, they actually have the word frustration pumping through veins. It's so yeah, stupid. like as a biologist, they I just, yeah, I forgot to take that like extra kind of subspecialty. Yeah. Yeah, Frustratology 101. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, these are the same receptors that bond heroin. And my notes are just, which receptors? The ones that ingest the chemical of jealousy? Yes. Whoops is talking to whom <laughs> about what? Uh, yeah, he literally, he literally says the same molecules of emotion that are pumping through your blood bind to the receptors that bind heroin, which from a scientific perspective, he's saying that emotions bind to opiate receptors. What would that mean? Opiate receptors bind heroin. But the funny thing is, he might be, like sometimes when you try to make sense of nonsensical stuff, it's like he might be talking about endorphins because endorphins are hormones that are secreted and they actually do kind of activate opiate receptors, but they cause an analgesic effect. Endorphins make us feel good, not bad. So it's like even his, in a stretch, his argument is backward. Yeah, even if you're (laughs) going out of your way to be kind to it. Yeah, he's still wrong. It's it's my mom describing a movie she saw with actors she doesn't remember, the scientific (laughs) statement. Right. Who's who's the chemical receptor? He does frustration (laughs) and jealousy. (laughs) And he he was in it with heroin. You loved him. (laughs) He was in heroin. With heroin? (laughs) Anyways, he died. (laughs) He also says, by the way, the frustration molecules that, first of all, pump through your blood, like this is what? Okay, so the frustration molecules pumping through your blood that then bind to, he doesn't know the word opiate receptor, so he has to say mm. the same receptors that bind heroin. He's like, you know how when you take heroin once you're an addict? No. No. That's, that's not how that works at all. That's It's demonstrably false. And anecdotally, yeah. And then he just stops talking and you're like, you're like, but what was the point of that entire argument you're making? I just wanted to mention that if anyone's got any heroin, I'm buying. <laughs> just throwing that out there. <laughs> no, so but, but but his point though is that you get addicted to being frustrated or being jealous, and and that that's why you're. That was his point. Well, but like, if that was actually his point, no, why didn't he say that? Well, the, because he is incapable of making a point directly. <laughs> a coherent to, sentence. Yeah, I was every say. point has to come at you from an angle or something. Mm. He's, he has only oblique points. Um, <laughs> so then we get this. We get the little Max Planck quote about how the old guard needs to die off, and then everybody will all believe in energy healing or whatever the fuck they're trying to say. Right. Just stop going to school, everyone. Yeah. So that's when we start kicking off the how portion of ridding ourselves of these negative emotions, right? Sort of. Well, yeah. <laughs> sort of. Like, it's, it's still pretty vague. So John's going to start us off, and he's got some great advice. He says that we all have to have approximately the same emotional regulation as a three-year-old. Yeah. So, Eli, how's that sound to you as a, as a father of a three-year-old? Yeah, it's great. It's chill. I highly recommend I literally... <laughs> As I was watching this movie and as I was getting that advice, I was watching my son scream that he would not, in fact, go poop on the potty at my wife. And I was like, that is a kid who is healthily, he hasn't taken a shit for four days and he is processing his emotions healthily. He's about to let go of a submarine sandwich, but that is... At least he's not holding any emotional jealousy in his heroin receptors. You know what I'm saying? Did you also notice there's this creepy thing that he says about how your accumulated emotion builds up in your body and it makes you hard. He says this over and over. Yeah. And then it's like, all you've got to do is express those emotions and then you won't be hard anymore. Sure, you get that emotional release is what you need. I get it. Yeah, you go to the work bathroom, you express those emotions (laughs) first thing in the day before a lot of people are in. Oof. Oh, for fuck's sake. 
So yeah, and then we, we and again we have to watch Unwee Lady showing up for work, hating life, and Unwee guy crying out the window of his gorgeous fucking apartment, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They tell us here that the side effects for psychological medications include suicide and murder. And and while suicidal tendencies are one of the warnings they give you for certain medications, I've never heard murder. Kara, <laughs> is, is murder a pretty common side effect for some of the SSRIs? Because Cowboy Dan says it is. <laughs> Also, how can murder be a side effect of anything? Right? It feels like, that's, weird. that's an effect, really. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you're on Zoloft? Yeah, Zoloft gave me terrible dry mouth. Oh, dry mouth. Yeah, it made me murder my dad. So, yeah. <laughs> Would have loved some dry mouth. Oh, and Dr. Amelia. Oh, what does she say about it? How, like, SSRIs just move around all they of just the, move the, the neurotransmitters. Around. Yeah, they just move them around. They don't actually do anything. She clearly doesn't know how anything works. Like me cleaning up when someone's coming to my house. I just stuff all the <laughs> right, yeah, chemicals all, into my bedroom. That's all the antidepressants do. Well, luckily though, Cowboy Don has some actionable advice. He has a three-step process for curing <laughs> depression. <laughs> I love this so much because you can watch Kara's despair in her notes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Kara stops attempting to communicate information at this point in the movie. <laughs> and the rest of her notes are just like, I hate this. Yep. <laughs> yep. So so here's this here's this three step process. Number one, you need sunlight. Got to get out in the sun. And and OK, let's take these step by step. Sure. We will give him that there is a vi- he does kind of seem to sort of he's heard of vitamin D. You can tell mm-hmm. he's heard yep. of it. He is aware yeah. of vitamin D. <laughs> so that he's like, you need some sun and depression, but he doesn't really fully explain. And so we're like, OK, check sunlight. I'm with you so far. Move on. Sure. Sure. So far this so far, this isn't entirely an insane list. Mm-hmm. Hold on to that while you can, dear listener, because number two, the colors of the plant foods that you eat have to be orange and yellow. Yes, because what's the good part of the sun? That's right. It's the yellow part that helps you. I wrote in my notes and we lost it at one. We are one for yes. one. Is what <laughs> yes. we are. And three, by the way, is end of list. That's it. Yeah. He says and I fucking quote, if you eat an orange and pineapple together within 72 hours, your depression will go away. Yeah, it will blow you away. Kara, Kara, did you actually have attempt to eat an orange and a pineapple together? Because <laughs> Here's the thing. I've watched so much bullshit for this show at this point that there's always a little part of me that's like, I mean, we could try eating an orange and a pineapple <laughs> together. I don't know, man. <laughs> I just don't, it's like, it's so hard for me to get into the mind of somebody because he clearly is proud of himself. Like when he said that, he had this big fucking shit eating grin on his face. Oh, yeah. Like he is so proud of himself with that depression cure. You just eat an orange and a pineapple and then you wait three days. And like, that's such an easy thing to prove, to disprove. <laughs> like, how, how is he so deluded? Well, I think honestly, given what we've seen out of this guy, I think it's because he ate an orange and a pineapple and three days later didn't have depression. Didn't have no depression. Felt right. I good. Just, like, my note is I wonder how many people have killed themselves because of you, Cowboy Don. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then so then generic guy shows back up to tell us about a scientific study that proves all this bullshit. They showed depressed people equal numbers of pictures of weddings and funerals, and the depressed people remembered more funeral scenes. So clearly, you make your own depression by lack of pineapple. I don't even right. fucking know. <laughs> but, I don't even, but then they couldn't see Columbus's ships at all on the slides <laughs> yeah. is what happened. So. Just continue to struggle with these if-then statements. It's like, what is the next logical? Oh, these people. Okay. But now, but now it's magic trick time. Oh it's my magic God. trick time. Yes. Right? Because look, we've done this kind of bullshit before, right? Uh, psychology of death. Kara did 9-11. Okay, we've heard, we've heard it all. Mm-hmm. But have you done finger loops to test <laughs> what's going on in your brain? <sighs> this movie looks you in your fucking eyes and tells you to do finger loops like you did when you were four and pull them apart. And if it's hard to pull them apart... That's when your brain is good. But if it's easy to pull apart, that's when your brain is bad. So you got to do fucking finger loops, Ouija boards with your emotion. And then this actress who deserves several Oscars (laughs) 
acts it out as though it's not the silliest fucking thing a human has ever been at. Shit porn actors are watching this woman being like, oh, there's got to be a better way to make money than that. Come on. <laughs> no. You're going to get sick. <laughs> so you're going to get sick. <laughs> yeah, they call it muscle reflex testing. Yep. And first they claim that we have reflexes that control every aspect of our body. No, we don't. What? Nope, that's not a thing. And then not only can you muscle test yourself, you can muscle test others. Literally, muscle test a child, an animal, no consent needed. Yes. Wait, why does it... They said earlier in the movie that animals don't have anxiety. Is, when they say you could do... First of all, animals don't have fucking thumbs and... For, you have to do it with a chimp, I guess. You have to fucking find Coco, the sign language speaking gorilla. gorilla. It's, no, it's even dumber than that. But yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you've got to be like, let me test. You got to tap Coco on the knee and be like, yeah, no, she's got fucking depression, let me tell you right there. So there's a type of pseudoscience called applied kinesiology, and that's all they're repackaging here, right? Yes. It's like, it's a super debunked pseudoscience that talks about how, you know, you can diagnose illness or choose treatments by testing different muscles for how strong or how weak they are. And they're just repackaging it in a way that they can apply it to their emotional cure. And it's all, it's all bullshit. Yeah. And by the way, listener, lest you think that we're just talking about a throwaway line and, and, and we're glomming onto it or whatever, the animals thing, this guy, Dr. Brad, tells us a story of using his applied kinesiology trick on a horse. Mm -hmm. This is the best. I love it. Guys, this is the best thing you that's ever happened. <laughs> You can't do, like he, Eli said, they don't have fingers, so they can't do finger loops. So what you have to do is have a, a person do finger loops on behalf of the horse. So they touch the horse and then you do finger loops with them. Facilitated <laughs> applied yeah. kinesiology now. It's bullshit to the third power. <laughs> Think about the beautiful world we live in that uh -huh. we could find this man on the street and be like, hey, <laughs> tell me that story. And he'd be like, one time a horse saw a bird die and then the lady he touched, her fingers got weak and that's how I knew it happened. I'm an adult with a driver's license and the same amount of votes as Kara. <laughs> He says at the beginning of this section, the emotion code works with animals, yet he hasn't told us at this point in the film, I'd say we're an hour in. Close to it, yeah. Like a full hour. Hasn't actually told us, A, what the emotion code is, or B, how the emotion code works. Because, okay, we're talking now about finger loops, but what does it do? Right, well, we're, <laughs> we're going to get there and we're going to get there in the most glorious way. But the fact that we've just done horse depression cures with facilitated applied kinesiology dowsing is all the bullshit I can take in a single sitting. So I need to stand the fuck up. First, let me give back to the hard sell. Will ennui guy and ennui lady get it together in time? Will Don's mustache escape from his face and devour space time itself? Are these beta blockers a waste of my time? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the demotional conclusion of Emotion 2.0. No, I can check my calendar on that. Y yeah, sure. Okay, I'll call you back. Kara! Damn it, guys. Really? My fridge? Yeah, we've been in there like 45 minutes. Yeah, what's the matter with you? That thing is empty. Is adrenochrome filling? Is that what this is? <sighs> no, guys. I've been using Factor. What's Factor? Factors ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery store's prep work and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Wow, that sounds amazing. But, Kara, I'm vegan and Noah's heart healthy. Do they have stuff for us? They sure do. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. All right, Kara, we're sold. Where do we sign up? Head to factormeals.com slash awful50 and use code awful50 to get 50% off. That's code awful50 at factormeals.com slash awful50 to get 50% off. Thanks, Kara. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an ice cream headache to sleep off in your bed. I didn't have ice cream in there. Yeah, he brought his own. Got it. And what does symptom mean? A sign of chaos. Cut. Sorry, uh, Greg? 
Uh, hey, Larry. Uh, hey, Caitlin. What, what's up? Well, sorry. It's just that's not what symptom means. Oh, wait, no, because uh, Sim Tom. No, no, I, I know it, it sounds like words, but you, you could say what it should mean to us is. Got it. All right, sure. Uh, why, why don't we move on? Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, and action. Now, when we hold fast to something, what does fast mean? It means to strengthen. Cut. Like, Again, I'm so sorry. I just, that's not what that means. Yeah, it does. Like hold fast? No, it's just a different use of the word, man. Well, all right, why don't we move on again? Okay, yep, sure. Let's move on again. Anyway, where was I? Oh, uh, a glass of lemon juice will cure depression. Finally, he's talking some sense again. I know, right? <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action, answering Kara's question from right before the break. We're going to get Dr. Brad, and he's going to show us the emotion code chart. Ouija board for your fingers! <laughs> it's so, so bad. It's literally... Do you remember when you would go to like a haunted house as a kid and it'd be like, are you a boy ghost? Yes. It's that, but full-grown adults for where their <laughs> emotional baggage is being kept. So he's got this little chart. Uh, along one side, it's got it's got two columns full of emotions. And then on the other side, it has like what those emotions cause. So like rejection, lungs, feeling taken for granted, gallbladder, low self-esteem, spleen, that kind of stuff. That, those are all real examples off of the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also like that if you actually look at the chart, when you give too many no's, they give you a nonsense organ, and they're like, well, fine, you know what? If you're going to know twice in a row, spleen, your spleen is wrong. Tell me how your spleen's not wrong. Exactly, yeah, you're stuck <laughs> with spleen. Well, so, and then here's how it works is you put, you do your little finger pulls, your wrist pushes or whatever, and you ask your body, hey, body, is my malady in column A or column B? And if you say, and, and then your body will tell you yes or no by making your finger lock pulls harder. Mm -hmm. Your body is a counting horse at a, at a <laughs> yeah. country fair, at a state fair. Yeah. <laughs> Clever Hans. Yeah. And then <laughs> as you figure out where on the chart your thing is, then you, the next step is it doesn't matter because the way that you're going to cure it is you're mm -hmm. going to pet yourself on the head because the governing meridian just governs all the other meridians. And so why go to the thing that's wrong when you can just go to the top dog? Yeah, I don't know why they're doing the Ouija board. You can just run a magnet and they, can we say, they totally sell that magnet. He's like, yeah, you can just pet yourself or you could use this highly effective magnet. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, man, there is an absolute like, if this was a TikTok, I would be seeing the TikTok shop icon underneath your face right now, my dude. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So the idea is this, that once you've locked down which part of your body, your trapped emotion is hurting or whatever, then you rub a magnet against the meridian that controls that emotion, except that, as Kara pointed out, the governing meridian controls all the other meridians. So no matter what your answer is, you rub a magnet over the top of your head. They show people doing this with the magnetic strip on their credit card. Yep. In case we were in danger of taking it seriously. Yeah. And he actually uses that as a as a weird metaphor. He's like, the emotion code, it's like when you when you run a magnet over your credit card and it demagnetizes it. But like, you know, when you do that, it stops working, right? It's, that's a bad thing. Yeah. That's not a not good, good thing. <laughs> well, so okay. And then Cowboy Raymond shows up to tell us that we can also do all this same stuff with with dousing, right? We don't you don't have to do fancy finger locks if you don't want to. You can also in case that doesn't look dumb enough, you can also use a pendulum. And he has the best pendulum ever. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what pendulums are, there's this thing called the micromotor response. You hold the thing, it moves when you think in a certain direction because you move it with your fingers when you're not really thinking about it. But it's a mediocre magic trick. Except his pendulum, the way those usually work is you write yes on one end and no on the other. Or you do the cross and then one side of the cross is yes and the other side of the cross is no. And so you can kind of move it with your brain. But Cowboy Raymond's pendulum circle is just a circle. 
is just a fucking circle that sort of spirals into a yes. So there's no information a pendulum would give you. It's like, <laughs> and if you notice any movement of a dangly thing, that's a give me $99. That's yeah. it. okay. <laughs> what have I become? And then once he's he's he tries to explain all of this and then he gets to the end of it and it's made no fucking sense at all. And he realizes this and he says he adds what I'm saying is you can transform one type of energy into another. Yeah. And if you can do that, why haven't you single handedly solved the fossil fuel crisis? Sure. Ooh, cold fusion. Cowboy. OK, real question. Would the end of Earth's energy crisis be worth it if we had to interact with Cowboy Raymond to do it? <laughs> uh, my answer is no. I feel like if it was Cowboy Don, I'd be with you. I feel like Cowboy Raymond, may, he might be worthwhile. Yeah. All right. I done changed this power grid into cold fusion for you. That's why I'm... <laughs> okay. And maybe I'm reading too much into this, okay, into this next scene. But then we we see Ennui Lady getting a shoulder rub. Oh, this scene makes me so uncomfortable. I don't think she's getting a, a shoulder rub. She's getting a Reiki session. Oh, is that like what it is? Like this person, okay. yeah, they're just like holding their hands over her and stuff. But her boobies are very prevalent in this scene. There's a is real it just like, me? yeah, no, it's a lot of boobies. Like there's a very like now sometimes to get all the way cured you'll have to be naked kind of a feel to this whole thing, yeah. right? Yeah, mm because -hmm. because when we see that and the guy's rubbing her or whatever and then John comes in and he's like well you know sometimes the therapist has to physically touch you and they want to touch you in a loving gentle sensitive way and I'm like oh god yep. yeah <laughs> this is taking a dark fucking turn yeah he keeps talking about massages with release and releasing mm -hmm. people's loans and I wrote mm -hmm. in my notes I bet this guy gets a lot of confusing feedback on Yelp for that <laughs> phrasing <laughs> Hey, uh, are you Mike? Yes, yes, of course. Come on in. So I hear you um, release people's loads. I do, I do. So tell me, what's been bothering you? Well, uh, well, let's say I've been dealing with a lot of tension, you know, loaded up with tension, and I could just, I could use your help. Mm, well, that is what I do. So why don't you hop up on the table? Oh, on the table. Okay, yeah, sure. So tell me, anything happened in your childhood, you think, that might be causing this tension? Dude, what? Like, when you were a kid? I I don't want to talk about my childhood, man. I think it's really important if I'm going to release your emotional energy, okay? Wait <laughs> wait a minute, emotional energy? I, I thought you were going to jerk me off. No, 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 no. I, I, I give people massages and we talk through their feelings. Oh, dude, that's that's disgusting. Therapy is a real medical practice. You can't just replace it with massage. Okay, I help people. No, you don't. You're sick, man. You should be in jail. Hey, guys, Um, thanks for not having me in this sketch. You are welcome, Kara. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just no, like that. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but but we watch her like we watch her release a load right during this Reiki session. Yeah, she has she, an emotional breakthrough. She has an emotional orgasm. It's true. Well, sure. It happens. <laughs> she we see cries it for a second. Hey, Kara, she cries. <laughs> I... <laughs> Eli, when's the last time you had an orgasm? I've never. I told you <laughs> I'm waiting for marriage. <laughs> Not his. Heath's. He's <laughs> not mine. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for Heath's marriage and then I get to have one. <laughs> oh, oh, I love this next claim that physicists have confirmed what the ancient scholars knew. Everything is made of light. What? No, they haven't. Sure what? haven't. Sure. Even the ancient scholars would be like, I never fucking said that. Dude, don't, <laughs> don't lie about the stuff I said. I think maggots come out of meat, but I don't fucking think that we're made out of light. That's stupid. Right. No, the, the, the one thing that the ancient fucking scholars and the physicists agree on is that you're wrong about that. Yeah. So The universe is like 27% dark matter, which is by definition not visible light. Nope. And it's about 68% dark energy, according to CERN. Well, there you go. So it's you like go. it's anti-light, really. <laughs> yeah. And hey, if you like that kind of wrong, let's cut over to Cowboy Don, who's going to let us know that the only food on Earth that has bile is lemons. And when I wrote that sentence down, I just wrote, 
what the fuck am I writing? What have I chosen to do with my life? <laughs> This this is where Don really goes off the fucking rails. And that's saying something for how off the rails he was to begin with, right? Because first he tells us that the everything's made of light. Then he tells us that you can cure all your problems by going for a walk. His literal advice for depression is walk it off, right? Yeah. I, I, and I want the fucking Little League coach movie about psychological health. And then he tells us that, that anions are bile, and that lemons are the only food that contains anions, i.e. bile. Which is weird because we eat livers. So that you'd think there would be some bile, but no, it's just, it's just lemons. He recommends a, fre a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice every day. Yo, do you know how much fucking lemon juice that, that would give you? Oh my God. Does he give you heartburn so bad that you're like, you know, I'm not suicidal anymore. I just want the heartburn to end. And he literally claims that if you do this, that in 90 days, your liver failure will be reversed. Yep. Well, to be fair, most people who have liver failure die within like 24 hours of that happening. So technically your liver failure will be revert. Your liver will no longer be failing. Yeah, well, when, when life gives you liver failure, make lemonade, clearly. Make anions, yeah. Yeah. So God only fucking knows what he's going for. And then Dr. Amelia explains that our big problem is that we're afraid to spend more time in the sun, mm -hmm. right? We got to just lay out and get our vitamins and sun minerals and whatnot. Yeah, because if you're lacking neurotransmitters, you just need some amino therapy. Yes, I was like, ooh. But then she doesn't tell us what that is. Nope, nope. <laughs> and then Cowboy Don explains to us that chakras are actually very scientific, just like a very scientific thing that I also know about that also has seven things in it. So, oh, I went down a, a like an internet Googling rabbit hole because I was like, are there seven neoendocrine glands? There aren't. There are a lot of neoendocrine glands, but they have defined it as seven levels of neoendocrine glands, meaning that there are Nero, yeah. kind of neoendocrine glands in all the places that they kind of say chakras are. So what is a neoendocrine gland? <laughs> keep in mind that one of the chakras is above your fucking head. Okay, right. so. it's, it's, just, it's about an inch. And I don't know if your pituitary sticks out three or four inches above your head, but mine does. <laughs> Certainly does these get days. That looked at. Yeah, they're literally claiming that chakras are just endocrine organs. Yes. They're just glands. So like, you know, like your like you said, like your, your thymus, like, you know, your adrenals, like these are just your chakras. And then they don't complete that thought. No, he <laughs> actually says again. at one point, he says, this is the most bizarre quote in the movie to me as he's explaining where those chakras are. He says, quote, the ovaries, the testicles and everything in between. All right. What? Which is everything because those aren't in the same person except in a very small, <laughs> Not very well, very small know, percentage of intersex yeah. individuals. Yeah, like what? <laughs> and if if they are in an intersex individual, there's not a lot in between them. Oh, They're right. They'd be very to close together. together. Very small, but there's there's some connective tissue, which is technically all of it. Oh, right, so, right. You know, right. Yeah. That's connected you to your big toe thumb and your He beard. does the, yeah, yeah. It's the color wheel of emotions here where he's oh, like, God. red needs green foods and green gets rid of anger. And I just wrote in my notes, me gently trying to press an entire lime into Noah's mouth next time I fuck <laughs> up our pocket. <laughs> Noah? But doesn't he say something really weird? Like, okay, he's literally like, okay, red's a negative emotion and if you look at red and then you close your eyes, you see green. So by that logic, you need to eat green things and vegetables are green. Coincidence? So yes. here's what you've got to do. Drink the blood of vegetables. Yes. He says, Why does he drink use the word the blood, blood of, of colored <laughs> foods? It feels real racy, <laughs> right? It feels racial. It does a little bit. It's, yeah. I don't know. Well, keep in mind, this is the same guy that earlier said that the side effects of his antidepressants were murder, right? It's like, so mm -hmm. what's going on in Don's life? Yep. And then, like, as he's just pontificating, he's like, or follow me, follow me. Or if you don't want to do the opposite of red green thing and eat vegetables because gross, all the seven spectral colors of the rainbow are in water. It's a prism. So you get all the things you need by just drinking water. So just don't eat food. Yeah. Yeah. Fast. Just drink water. Just do a fast. You can have dark chocolate or hops. You can <laughs> also, I love this because this is one of those weird things where like he obviously smokes, right? So he has 
commercial cigarettes as being toxic. Yes. You know, this asshole <laughs> rolls his own shitty ass <laughs> dank cigarettes and he's like, these are organic, so it doesn't count. <laughs> Then he tells us he can get us off drugs with black licorice. Oh, I'd rather still smoke. But only if... Jesus Christ. Only if you eat it in conjunction. Oh, my God. I wish we had watched this movie before Noah quit smoking, just so we could have done a week of like, all right, no, no patches, just black licorice. <laughs> black licorice and macadamia nuts. Don't fuck this up. Sure. You got to take yeah, all right, don't, yeah, yeah, right, can't. right. So it, would be, it would be medically negligent for us not to mention the macadamia The macadamia nuts. nuts. Yeah, those are the... He's like, at one point, he's like, here's the thing. These are all the same genus, which he means to say genus. But then in like he, in the same breath, he's like, they're the same family. Those words are not interchangeable. Sure. A genus and a family are massive differences. Yeah. This is also the guy who at this point explains to us that fasting means to strengthen. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have uh, Dr. Amelia comes in. Oh, she's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> she says that uh, I love how stupid she is if you want to be healthy you have to vibrate at a high frequency which fucking duh and then she says <laughs> and I quote she says we're constantly being exposed to the retrovirus which is the cold virus I think okay here's see here I thought the retrovirus was bell bottoms <laughs> <laughs> well you know what is a retrovirus HIV. Yes, yes. Like, so I think, did she mean rhinovirus? Should we? Like, okay, if, yeah. That would make way more fucking sense. <laughs> I'm not constantly being exposed to retroviruses. <laughs> I mean, to each his own, you know. You don't party the way Dr. Amelia does, okay? <laughs> Live your own life, Dr. Amelia. You said oldest lady at the orgy. She's ready to go. <laughs> Oh, what am I supposed goodness. to bring my own needles to this orgy? Relax. Oh, <laughs> Let the band play on. I'm Dr. Amelia. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then somehow it gets worse with Dr. Michelle because now we're getting into like full cultural appropriation. Ho'oponopono. Not just partial. Yeah, we, we switch over from Dr. Amelia to Michelle, who is not a doctor. Oh, you're right. Just Michelle. Sorry. Yeah. Miss Michelle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She explains her favorite technique for letting go of negative emotions from the people of the the indigenous people of Hawaii. It, it is called the Ho'oponopono. Because I love it when white people teach me about indigenous people. Yes. Oh, please. Yes. <laughs> and look, Hawaiians say it all the time. They're like, please, white people, take our deep spiritual practices and sell them to other white people <laughs> as a way to get over their breakups from guys named Mike. Like, this is what we needed. <laughs> but apparently this is her technique of, again, her words, taking full responsibility for whatever comes into our lives. which. Okay, so it's a couple of different angles to tackle that one. First of all, no, it's not because her technique is talking to yourself rather than dealing with your shit. Mm -hmm. But secondly, like, why would we want to take responsibility for whatever comes into our lives? Like most of the shit that comes into my life is I'm not responsible for. Right. If anything, she, you need like a whole Eli Pono Pono where you got to <laughs> figure out... <laughs> My responsibility. <laughs> Both of you honestly could use yeah, a whole right. Eli Pono Pono where you just oh, like every day of my you life. You and some people in Lay's kick the shit out of me in an alley somewhere. Like yes. if that's what Michelle was recommending, I'd get it. That would be very cleansing for my emotions. Right. Yeah, I right. Think it would right. really right. help yeah. your chi. I would let all of those pesticides out of my cells. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, you would you would shit glycol for like a month, no <laughs> illusions. Let me tell you. Oh, so here's the thing about this whole thing, right? Is that this is a white people privileged cult. That's yes. what they're doing here. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm channeling Michelle here. Can you imagine a black client going to Michelle and saying, I need help? And her saying, all you've got to do is ho'oponopono. Just take 100% responsibility for all the systemic racism that's ever brutalized yes. you in your yeah. life. It's your fault. Just own it. Just own it. Right. This is the entire fucking movie and the entire concept and the entire movement behind this is just people who have never had a real fucking problem looking at people mm -hmm. with problems going like, the fuck did you do wrong? Right. Yeah. Which is hilarious because... Cowboy Don is 39 years old. Right. Yeah. He looks 
Oh, so rough. We're rough. gonna get to that in just a this minute. This man we're has s- real problems. We're yeah. so close Spoilers. to that reveal. It's so I'm much. Sorry, fun. I just can't. <laughs> He's great. So, and then we get Dr. Darren. He has to show up to give more life advice to us. He says, "You know, life isn't about what happens to you." And I'm like, "Oh no, that's it, that is what it, that's, that's what by the definition word about that is what means. it is, my man." Yeah, he's like, "It's what you do with all of that stuff." It's like, "Oh, more privileged bullshit." Do you stop existing if you don't do things with that stuff? No, Darren. Well, then you're wrong. Then you are incorrect, Darren. And so, and by the way, Kara, this is where I wrote down essentially the same thing you wrote down because then Sonia comes up with her panacea, mm-hmm. the oldest lady at the orgy. She comes up and she goes, um, well, you know, what I do is I, I, I tell my clients to take a deep breath, put your hand on your heart, focus your attention on the present and ask, what are you afraid of? Yeah. If I weren't afraid, I would. And I literally wrote down. Well, then what? Like her ther- therapy yeah. sessions sound like they take two minutes. Like if I weren't afraid, I would. Okay, give me $500. And then a second later after I wrote that, she goes, it only takes two minutes. Yes, two yeah. minutes. You're here. <laughs> well, as long as you don't have any real fucking problems. Yeah. It's a rapid fire. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> also, like, have these people, because I can understand the people that that would be useful for, right? People who are dealing with like anxieties and self-confidence issues and stuff like that. But like, they know people like me exist, right? Like, right. You, what would you do if you were not afraid is me swinging a samurai sword around <laughs> Sears because I took a, a weekend yoga class. They must be aware. I'm not saying they are me, but they're aware that me's right. are out there in the world. Right. It's like I wrote my notes. I'm like, I feel if anything, my nature is too fearless. All of this, you need to let go of your fear shit. No, I really fucking do. I should be afraid of more yes. things. <laughs> what should you be afraid of? that you're currently not. That's a fucking, that's my, right. what I need my yogi to tell me at the top of the mountain. Ah, oh, and then uh, Dr. Brad shows up. He has an, an, another anecdote he wants to share with us. And it's so stupid because it starts out self-contradictory. He says, you know, I met this woman. She'd never been in a long-term relationship. Um, anyway, eight years ago, she was dumped. How? And it broke her heart. Yeah. How could she yeah. be dumped if she'd never been in a long term relationship? Like they did, like on the first date, he's like, I'm dumping you. How does that work? <laughs> yeah, it seems hard for that to have been a thing. But that that's why she developed a heart wall. Right. A heart, oh, heart wall. wall. Mm-hmm. And he says, like, he's like, I felt her heart. And I'm like, because because he, he it said, and you know, she's really she was really attractive, so there's no reason why she couldn't have a long term relationship. Oh yeah, she wasn't weird. fat. I know what you guys are thinking. She was probably fat, right? No, not fat. Anyways, back to my helpful yes. advice. Right? Yeah, and he he's weirdly like, spends like a lot of time clarifying that she was hot. Yes, like just just so you guys know, she was hot. Right, and and then he goes like, and I felt her heart, and I'm like. Are you saying that you put your hands on this attractive client's chest? And yes, he is. He clarifies that he means he physically placed his hand between her breasts and rolled her fucking boob rock heart wall away. Yeah. So he uses the weirdest metaphor here. The only time I have ever heard of a stone being rolled away is the rock outside of Christ's tomb, yes. right? Have you ever yeah. heard that used any other way? No. Mm-hmm. What a weird fucking image to you. You remember when our Lord emerged from and spoke to the disciples and said, now the time is nigh, I come back to you within a generation. That was what it was like while I was grabbing this lady's tit. So yeah, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> take my class for $999. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh. He also said, he said that, so he cleared her heart well. He could feel her heart energy, a.k.a. he fondled her breast. And then he bathed in the energy that came out of her core. Gross. Right? That's just gross. Don't bathe it. Just wash, wash up, man. And like, this whole scene is just deeply sexist because he basically just goes on to be like, so ladies... Clearly, the biggest problem plaguing you is not finding a man. Yes. Yeah, it's that you have a heart wall. Yeah, women come to him to find love because they've put up their, again, very disgusting victim blaming. And you're, <laughs> you, you, ha- you used to have a heart butterfly, but now it's a heart gargoyle. Now it's a heart gargoyle. And I, again, <laughs> we're, we're not even making this up. They have a graphic. He says, we, we go back to that shot from earlier of Ennui Girl flirting 
with the guy at the bar. And he's like, you know, she's trying to send out a love butterfly, but her heart wall turns it into a gargoyle before it gets to him. And in case that doesn't sound stupid enough, they give you a little CGI yeah, butterfly turning into dumb. a little CGI gargoyle after going through a little CGI heart wall. And Kara, like, I don't want to air our grievances on air, but I will say sometimes I have felt like your heart butterflies are heart gargoyles. So like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to tell another person to do the work on air, but like do the work because I would love so, more butterflies and less gar... I, oh my God. I'm going to use I would love more butterflies and less gargoyles from you on my wife the next time she's like, you're an idiot who's destroying our life. <laughs> And I'd like you to sing at my funeral. That's what I'm All saying. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, be lovely. <laughs> I just, I just, it's like, I want to kind of break down how sexist this scene really is. Because what happens in the background of this guy talking about releasing, you know, fondling women's tits and releasing their heart walls is that the actors are meeting in an elevator. Yes. And... He invites her on a date to get juice and she gives him her number and then they don't even know each other's name. So they give them their name. And the thing is, all of this is like from this perspective of like this poor woman and her heart walls because she is filled with, I don't know, negative energy. Now that she's finally been able to block it, she's going to find love. Who's the love? The fucking piece of shit on we guy. He is not a prize. Right. Like this is such patriarchal bullshit. Like somehow she's so thrilled because she got the dregs. Right. She got the fucking Cillian Murphy fucked off from Wish that is this actor. Yeah. And but but then also like the the idea clearly is that neither of these two can be complete without a long-term relationship, right? Like that, that there's just no way for a human being to be complete otherwise. I guess, but again, they never talk about him. It's never about his journey. Like they kind of show it in the background, but they very much focus, and this is just what society does, on like the failures of this fucking old maid woman right. who hasn't yeah. like fixed her heart energies. So instead, let's go to a male practitioner who's going to sexually assault you so that then you figure out that you should just settle for this piece of shit guy. Like, what is this? This makes me very mad. Yeah. Also, like they're at fucking work. He's in the elevator with her and he's like trying to get her number. I the risk of being Rebecca Watson. Dude, not now. This is not the fucking yeah, time for it. Don't do it. <laughs> not, not a good idea. Richard's going to comment on this podcast. I'm yeah, sure I'm sure he will. He'll be there soon. He'll be here soon. He could have bitten him and he didn't. So, but then Michelle has more techniques for us. She's not all Ho'opono Pono, guys. She's also got the <laughs> Walker from Reno technique to share with us. Yeah. Right. This is where you think of a conflict that you're having with someone. And I just love this fucking accidental commentary she gives on her home life. She's like, think of a conflict that you have with someone like my husband and me. My husband, that piece of shit. Who have conflicts. I fucking hate him. She says, yep. <laughs> and then she's like, hey, put your hand over your heart and then say, my heart is full of love and understanding twice. You got to say that twice. And then you're done. Oh, well, I'm sorry. You can also do that for other people. She says, you can also do it for other people. Like my husband, you could put your hand over your heart and say, Greg's heart is full of love and understanding. Greg's heart is full of love. And then she looks at us and she's like, but not, but Greg is my husband. You would have to use your husband. You can't use, unless you're <laughs> fucking him. <laughs> Ashley. Ashley, if you're watching this, <laughs> your heart's not full of love and understanding. <laughs> so... But yeah, so then we, we get that method. Generic guy shows back up to tell us that um, he has used emotional reprogramming to cure. This is his last multiple sclerosis, lupus, cancer, et cetera. Et cetera, you know. He also like hesitates before. Uh-huh. You can't tell if he's like, what sounds really impressive? <laughs> or if he's like, can I legally say this right. out loud? Yeah. Am I going to get sued? Mm -hmm. And then we get the moment that you've all been waiting for where Cowboy <laughs> Don says, hey, look, I'm pain free and I'm 39 years old. And we okay. all wrote in our notes. Oh, my God, dude, go to a doctor. <laughs> he looks fucking awful for 39 years old 
so much worse, so much older than me. And I'm 37. He looks a decade and a half older than I am. And I am looking rough. I park in <laughs> handicapped spaces. They don't even look for the sticker anymore. And they look at Don and they're like, holy shit. I thought he was in his like 50s or 60s. Yes, yeah, I thought if you'd asked me, I would have yeah. said 55. Yeah. I would yeah. have said 60. I had a moment. Sure. This guy is a year younger than me. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I got like eight years on this years motherfucker. Older. Oh, my God. He looks like he could be your grandfather. <laughs> Easily. Yes. Easily. Yes. And then he goes, and then he says that. He goes, I'm, 30, I'm paying for you. I'm 39. I've never been to a doctor. And I'm like, well, that'll explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. He, or a dentist. <laughs> yeah, right, right. He goes, I've never taken medicine. And I'm like, I don't believe you, but that would explain why you look like that. Yeah. <laughs> Rough. In the background, Ennui Guy and Ennui Lady are falling in love, right? Robert Smith shows up again to tell us that, um, you know, once you get rid of your negative emotions, you can just think about the stuff you want and suddenly it'll be there. Oh, yeah. This guy is just full secret. Like every, yeah. Yeah. every soundbite of his is like, you want a new house? Just just manifest it. And you're like, cool. Thanks for the advice. I have a question. <laughs> Kara, you're amongst the Los Angeles mm -hmm. and that where this kind of thing is commonplace. Mm hmm. How does that thought stay in someone's head for more than a day? Yeah, I know. Right? Because I get <laughs> watching the documentary, right? And being like, you know what? That's right. Mim, 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 I want a house. But 48 hours later, you have to be like, well, I wanted a house and I don't have a house. New technique, right? No, because it reminds me. Have you guys seen the new cult documentary about the Twin Flames cult? Fuck Not yes, yet, I have no. Kara Santa right, Maria. Okay, so you I know, never you identified know, me. You know, you we like, are locked the fuck in right now. <laughs> yes, we are. So it reminds me of the same rhetoric that you see in all of these different cults, but the Twin Flames one is just like the most recent cult doc I've watched, where basically people are like, I'm trying. Like, I, I, you told me this guy was my twin flame, and I'm showing him that I care, and I'm being really persistent, and he's like, not persistent enough clearly you're failing, you're doing right. something wrong. So then these poor women end up with restraining orders against them because they're like knocking on these men's doors in the middle of the night, like, you're my twin flame. And they're like, you are a psychopath. You are, nope. I do not want to date you. And so, mm -mm. yeah, it's it just becomes this thing where they're like, I want to manifest a new house. And then they don't get the house. So they go back to the guru and they're like, why don't I have the house? And they're like, because you fucking failed. You've still got right, energy blocks. Come back in for another session. Right. Yeah. Like, well, the level two is $1,500.